horizontal grooves running through the canyon. Telling us about the origin of the island. The creation of Kauai was a very long, slow process with one lava flow stacked up on top of another. And sure, that's how all the Hawaiian islands were formed. But on this Hawaiian island, you can still see those ancient building blocks. So that means that when you look down in the canyon, you're actually looking backwards in time. Ancient Kauai is excavated from the valley floor underneath us by that muddy river, Waimea, River of Red Waters. That's how she got her Hawaiian name. Geologically modern Kauai is up at the top of the canyon, and that's where we're going to next. Just off to the right of us at the top of the canyon, rising above the tree line, there's an ancient Hawaiian tiki. We'll go take a look at that. Okay, it's not an ancient Hawaiian tiki. Actually, it's a modern cell phone repeater station. I'm just pointing out to you in case you want to bust out the phone and call some friends back home. Yeah. Hello. Hey, it's us. Yeah, we're still in Hawaii. Guess what we're doing right now? Flying in a helicopter. Beautiful sunny day. Gonna hit the mid-80s today. We're going to the beach after our flight and then oh, probably two or three rounds of Mai Tais before dinner. A phone call like that is guaranteed to make you extremely popular with your friends back home. Yeah, they love to hear from you when you're on vacation, especially if it's a Hawaiian vacation and it's picture postcard weather. Longest stretch of unbroken white sandy beach is on the west side of the Garden Island, Polyholly Beach straight ahead. I'd like to give you a closer look at it, but there's a problem, and it's uh, out the right window now. You see those little white golf balls on the ridge line? Those are radar domes. That belongs to the Navy, Pacific Missile Range Facility. The Navy has a little strip of restricted airspace along the lower cliffs here, so all the tour companies on Kauai have an agreement with the U.S. Navy. We don't fly our helicopters through their restricted airspace. Um, in return, the Navy does not fire missiles back at the helicopters. So it's kind of a mutually beneficial arrangement we've got with them. NASA has a base on the island, too. High on the ridge to the right of us at the entrance to Koke'e State Park. It's called Koke'e Telemetry Station. Big satellite dish up there, and right now it's collecting telemetry for NASA. Other than NASA and the Navy, it's a very remote section of the island, and that's what I like best about Kauai. Today, 95% of the island is still in the hands of Mother Nature, right where it belongs. Well, we've just about traversed the entire length of forest. And where the forest ends, we'll find the beginning of the world-famous sea cliffs of West Kauai, also known as the Da Pali Coast. Isn't that a pretty view? But look how calm the ocean is today. Not a white cap to be found. Out the right window, you got a great view looking down the entire length of Napali. Look at the nice cloudscape we've got in the background.
Casey, out your window is the beach split in two by a large rock Six formation. Wonderful beach. That was back in 1996. The largest of the Napali valleys is straight ahead, Kalalau Valley. And, and you know, here you can look out any window to the right, straight ahead, to the left. Sharp lines and edges will meet your gaze. That's the defining characteristic of the Napali coast. Sometimes we see mountain goats on the ridge line here. Let's see if there's any out this morning. Fortunately, we make a lot of noise coming down the road and they can hear us from a mile away. So if you're lucky enough to see a, a mountain goat, it's usually just the tail end of one as he's leaping over the edge of the cliff. See you out here today. It's also possible to see campers and hikers in the valley down below. It's legal to spend the night in Kalalau as long as you have a permit from the Department of Land and Natural Resources. But even if you do have one of those permits, you still got to figure out how to get to your campsite. We don't have any roads that lead to this valley. We do have a nice little goat trail. It's over 11 miles long and the Sierra Club says it's an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of hiking difficulty. I'm not really sure how anybody does that with 30 pounds of camping gear strapped to their backs. But I don't know, maybe I'm just a wimp. I mean, you got the bird's eye view. You can evaluate the trail for yourself. Far be it for me to discourage you from having any of the fun you're looking forward to while you're out here on vacation. Does that look like about an eight down there to you? <laughs> it's not an easy place to go for a walk. It is some of the most beautiful and unique scenery in all of Hawaii. Boy, look at the color of the ocean today. What a nice shade of turquoise blue and aquamarine. You really couldn't ask for a nicer day to be out here. A couple of weeks ago, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, and everybody thinks, oh, perfect sunny day, that's going to be great. So you get out here and you're blinded by the sun. To the right of us, there's a series of jagged pinnacles. Makana and her sister pinnacles were seen in the musical South Pacific, when a little bit of trick photography, turn that whole ridge line into the mythical island of Bali High. That was a few years ago. 1957 is when Hollywood fell in love with the Garden Island for the first time. They haven't been able to leave us alone ever since. Okay, so let's go, Gabby.